Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Court of Swords. Max, you were talking during the intro, and I am muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what was said. I'm sorry. But it just, it killed, you know. We I was talking about how I like the intro. Fair, I, w- I wish we had audio sent to us for the intro for us here. Roll our, the our intro call. again. Max <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> no, to be, to be fair, JP, in Max's defense, we didn't get a count in at all it's like true. It just the, we didn't, the intro no just started it's and then true. ended and there was no five there was no four there was no unmuting you like we normally get the episode just happened so in max's defense he didn't know you know i was he thinking the year of max's right strikes again i was thinking <laughs> shit i take right, it back no, we're i take it all back it. close the show no, i don't want to set the precedent Ah. <laughs> yep yep good stuff <laughs> mm-hmm. i just have to hold i need a second to get over what max said and then we're just gonna that's <laughs> yep. no, fine all right it's understandable <clears throat> i think i'm good i think i'm good mm-hmm. okay yep. max have you played god of war yet <laughs> nope all right well I then not. the year of max continuing to fuck up is still raging on you know wow what uh <laughs> what are what are you playing what are you playing, Max, if you're not playing God of War? I'm playing Witcher. Went back to more Witcher. Um, it's good. It's good. That's a fantastic JP, did game. I, see I you're gonna, it was a good game. Did I see you're going to play Witcher 2? Did I see you post, <laughs> no, post about that? Yeah, I think no. I'm going to. You're going to play Witcher 2? Wow. Yeah. Mm. Here's the thing. I, I want to go Look, them. I want to get into it, but I don't yeah. want to just jump into it, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want to jump because yeah. I think I've talked about this before. But I think the reason I disliked Witcher so much is because I had no connection to the characters when I jumped into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I, that's fair for me, too. Just like, hey, here's this fucking gray mutant guy, and he has a really annoying voice. He's really angry all the time. But this this Triss person, you? they had a lot of sex in the past, and uh, that's hmm. all you should know about that. By the way, we're going to go hunt some monsters. I was just like, hey, you know, I'm not I'm not invested. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from... The middle. <laughs> not the I was like, and he has concluded he shall start somewhere here in the middle. Yeah. I'm not going to play the Witcher one. That game looks like ass. It, even with all the HD mods, it looks a little bit rough. So it's okay. Mm. I like it. I mean, I'm sure it's a great mm. game. I'm sure it's, but it, you know, it, it, it just looks bad. I just can't get back. I, I couldn't, couldn't get past it if I wanted to. And the Witcher yeah. 2 looks pretty good. So. I like the first one, but I, I have a lot more, um, I give games a lot more leeway since, you know, I play a lot of I would think weird that's shitty accurate. ones a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think you, I think you made the right choice. I'll yeah. just say like, you fire up Witcher <laughs> 1, play it for like maybe an hour, maybe two, and you'd be like, fuck it, just tell me what's the story. Witch. Get tell Henry in like, here. Where's Henry? I need him to read. <laughs> I need him to read the stuff to me. I need the game read. I want Superman in here now. <laughs> Only he can save this shit show. Well, speaking of that, I I tuned in to watch because because Aaron Aaron had Aurelian hadn't played The Witcher, and I I saw she was playing Witcher three, and I tuned in to watch. Oh yeah, she's and I was like, it. I was like, something is not right about this. And I was watching, and I was like, I can't put my finger on why why does Geralt look so stupid? Oh yeah, and then I was like. Oh, oh, you yeah. have a mod that changes Geralt's face to Henry Cavill's face, but it's clearly not done by <laughs> professionals. Like it's it's like they glued it's a mask good. made out of Cavill's skin onto the model, and it's it's terrifying. They have, to one, watch. They have one of those. So Witcher definitely go check well. that. There's also one. I mean, we're mods are mods, but there's a mod for Witcher Two that makes the Witcher skinnier. <laughs> what? It just why, makes like why it just makes Geralt's frame skinnier. Is he described that way in the book or something? I don't know. I, maybe <sighs> it, it, I yeah. I saw that and I was just like, why does this like why does this exist? It's like less muscular, skinnier Geralt. I would think for a know. game that's like a power fantasy that you would it'd be like yeah. make Geralt <laughs> buffer, like give him give him yeah, some give, fucking get steroids. back to me. Yeah, get back to me when he's shaped like a triangle. Uh, that's <laughs> all I do, man. <laughs> Just yeah. huge yeah. meat neck, Geralt. I want my yeah. Witcher like Johnny Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I just want Johnny Bravo in The Witcher. I think that we're that's already a better game. <laughs> it might be pretty Chaitrit. good. You want to go? Maybe to make some love. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. How the game will go, mama? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd See, play I that. could get behind that. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm into it. Mm. So yeah, that's that's what we're doing in the future. He's probably I I don't know. There's got I got to mod a bunch of stuff. Modding games is half the fun, as Dan will agree. I know. It, 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 more more times it's fun more fun than the game. Sometimes mm. depends mm. depends on how crazy yep. you go. Sometimes you spend more time modding than you do actually playing. Well, that's just called game, Skyrim. Huh? That's Skyrim colon. You'll mm-hmm. spend more time modding this than you will playing it. Yeah, that's that's what that game's actual name is. Yeah. That that this, modded list that I might... used though, it was like a light modded list, it was pretty good. It kept all mm-hmm. like the, the essentials, but it wasn't too involved. That's why I did that. But I gotta yeah. get back to Skyrim. Thanks for reminding me. Man, Skyrim, <laughs> don't play Skyrim VR and try to mod it, Max. You will. I don't think I'm gonna do it. It seemed like it was a rough time for you, and I don't think I want to go through that. I think it was about twelve or thirteen hours of modding. All in. Oh god. Amateur. Doing, doing like saying, a uh, deep <laughs> right. Do, well, I was gonna say doing doing that, like yeah, a deep that was like mod pretty light. of a, yeah. a Doing a deep mod of a video game, like spending all that time, like tweaking and adjusting and getting it perfect. It feels kind of like collecting things that normally have a practical purpose, like books or movies or albums or whatever, but then never listening to them. Like it triggers that same part in my brain where I'm like, all right, I spent 20 hours modding this. It's perfect. It's ready to go. I'll play it later. And then I never do. And I just uninstall it. And I'm like, well, I spent all that time getting it perfect. And it's just like. Look yeah. at all these books I own, but have never read. Like it's about it's about the process of getting it just right, but maybe not exactly playing the game. Well, that's game. the pain in the it's ass. A whole other thing. That was the issue with playing in a VR is to like test it. You have to run like seven fucking programs in VR to like get the Skyrim started, and then you can go in game and be like, "No, that uh, I don't like that flowers. It's a little bit too sharp there on the edge. We got to go ahead and let's let's get let's change it up." Close everything down, go back in, edit the fucking file, upload it, oh, open all the seven programs in order, boot it up. Oh, yeah, that's a good flower. But that that horse over there, that's got some shitty hair. Let's see what we can get some horse hair. <laughs> you know, do it all over again. That grass texture just isn't right with yeah, those trees. I, I just don't like that, that grass. Thing. Doesn't look. I want thin <laughs> blades, not like fat, weird looking grass. I want the thin grass. <laughs> Dude, you sound like a niche subreddit right now, like like a grass appreciator subreddit. Like, yeah, I like the thin, long blades of grass. If yeah. they get too long, you know, you got to cut them back. I don't want the thick blades. Uh, I prefer a, a pH balance of a four on my uh, my soil. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Obsession over tiny details. There's something there's something compelling about it. I don't know if it's good, but yeah. 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 Anyways, completely different topic, but still keeping with the theme of Court of Swords, and that's shitting on Max. Max, I think you have zero hyperbole. I think in your body you do not hype anything up, and maybe that's not shitting on you. Maybe that's something to be in this day and age. Where's this coming? That's what we call an observation. It's an yeah. observation. Yeah. Just, it's not an insult. Mm-hmm. You're just you're noticing. Zero I'm just noticing. Yeah. I like what. What are you hype? I'm curious, and then I'll explain where all this is coming from. What's the last okay. thing that you did or saw that you were like real fucking hyped about? Like you couldn't contain yourself. I find no joy in anything. I know. That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Oh my God, Max, um, we have so much in common all of a sudden. Have you I met Adam, realize. by the way? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Welcome That's to why our club. friendship has uh, blossomed. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. uh, I don't know. I feel like. I'm jaded on a lot of video games. I still really enjoy video games and things in general, but as I, as you just get older, I think, and and you experience more of the stuff that you like, the stuff that you like loses its luster or hmm. future iterations of it come out and it doesn't live up to, you know, the hype that you used to have. So I think I kind of put myself in a default state of not getting too hyped about anything. So I don't get disappointed and maybe I get pleasantly surprised. That's kind of where I stay. That's what, that's the pocket for me. What about like the inverse of that, where like you'll see something and then you don't hype that up to other people. Is that because you don't want to set disappointment for them? Is that like a nice, exactly correct. Okay. Yep. That's something I've learned. Also do not hype things up to your friends. If you really care about it and want them to enjoy it because they will, there's something in people's brains mostly uh, where they're just like, all right, well now I have this expectation and now I kind of don't want to like it. Okay. Because (laughs) If he likes it and I like it, then it it's like it's not cool to like the thing that people like. Okay. You know what I mean? So well, let's begin I there. Just let people 1917 okay. is getting the craziest <laughs> reviews I have ever seen from both my social group and just Oh, like I see, I see. Critic yeah. reviews. You came on this show after seeing it months ago and said, 
yeah, it was all right. I, I, it was okay. I, I don't think it. I said it. I, I actually, <laughs> in my mind, in my mind, I felt I hyped it up pretty good. But I wasn't like, it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> That's what people are saying about this fucking movie. And then I it's cut fucking back amazing. To the first yeah, time great. I heard it's about great... it, it's like, yeah, you know, it was all right. It was. Here's war the thing, sucks, though. Now. Man, it was great. Have you seen it yet? No. So I have no opinion of my own. I'm just going off of and, other people's. And now opinions. you're hearing all these uh, critical, you know, these acclaimed critics uh, going through and saying it's fucking amazing. You're like. Maybe I should pay attention. And when Max says, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, no, that just means that I have to take everything you say with like, like if you say something's good, then it must be like godlike is where I can kind of go with saying. that. Mm-hmm. But then you shit on, see, I don't know how to say this because you shit on Joker. So I don't, is it the inverse? Because he's winning like and shit on act, Joker. actor I think of I the said, year saw- for his performance. And now I'm just like, well, wait a minute. Does great performance, like good performance for, for, for Joaquin, but. Not necessarily equally in great movie. Okay. All right. Well, this is also, we like, I'm, we're sponsored today by Joker. Uh, I bought the 4K oh. last night and uh, I'll be uh, taking a viewing uh, in between now and next week and I'll, I'll report back. So, see how that goes. Have you seen it yet? JP, no, I've not seen actually it. listen. You just I hate it. The same question. Oh, man. So I can't wait until next week when you're like, I finally watched the Joker and man, it sucks. <laughs> really I'm looking forward to that I, you guys like <clears throat> I, I feel like this show in particular really really shit on it but a lot of other people have like put in pretty high regards so i don't know <laughs> that fits so well to that monologue you just asked the same questions how <laughs> what have you played have you played god of war i didn't well <laughs> i asked that question yeah 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 adam was one that started yeah. okay don't put blame on me <laughs> adam went there first <laughs> wasn't me it was that yeah it was that 1917 good movie go see it some might even say movie of the year or best no, movie of all no, time or parasite parasite movie, movie of the year because the year just probably won't win so but really it's know. it's parasite is way better than all of the other movies on that list I, by like a long i haven't shot. seen a single movie that's on the uh the oscar nom <laughs> list for movie of the year i haven't seen any of them so i bought joker i bought once upon a time in hollywood i'm gonna buy parasite I'm just going to sit here with Ollie and just watch a bunch of movies. And then we're going to watch <laughs> Lord of the Rings. So he can, he can learn how to be Samwise. It'll be good. Or I'll be Samwise and he can be Frodo. I don't know. We haven't figured it out yet. I got to talk to him. We'll see how it goes. And that's what I've got. I just think for the Judy week. Dent got snubbed. Her portrayal in Cats was. Mm. Did Cats get any uh, Oscar nominations? I, I think mm-hmm. costuming. I think it did. Oh, it really? Did. Oh, God. Maybe. I'm not sure, though. I thought I saw it up there one, for one thing. I'm excited to buy There's that on one. 4K and be the only person to ever. I was going to say, you guys want to next live show we do? You just want to sit down and watch cats? We could. It depends could. if it's out then. I don't know. <laughs> Dan's out. Dan doesn't want, Dan's going back to the yeah. hotel. He will not stay for the viewing yeah, of cats I'll, on Saturday I'll, evening. <laughs> he will not be there. He'll I'll be pass there. on that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen oh, it. God. I haven't seen it. <clears throat> I haven't either. I have no thoughts on cats. The movie. Mm. Normal cats, though. I got a lot of thoughts on cats. They're pretty cool. They're all right. We've got two of them. Yeah. But. Here, where we could do those. Yeah. We'll just, we won't show the video. It'll be like kind of a podcast thing where we just, you know, tell people to sync up, hit play, and then it's just commentary. It's just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be fun. I just, I It'd just be like, like the opening would be I, like, so we're watching cats. This is a pretty interesting movie. And then people will like scroll through to like 40 minutes. It's just going to be Zeke going, <laughs> right <laughs> yeah slug. yeah it starts off like cats but it ends up like a david cronenberg movie where we're all just like insane and covered in blood for some reason yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i, can see I do like the idea of jp reviewing cats like the animals like people just show jp cats and jp's like that's a good one give that's me another right. one what else you got that's, uh-huh. right, that's a good one too yeah. yeah i'd be into it that's my that's gonna be my new twitter um thing <laughs> if you Reviewing tweet me cats. pictures of your cats i will review it and 200 and what 80 characters or less is that what's the character yeah. 280 characters or less <laughs> i will You're gonna be the gordon ramsay of cats yes <laughs> yes i will be the gordon ramsay of although you can't really i'm not gonna go where i uh, never mind let's move on i'm not gonna talk about cooking <laughs> cats you don't cook cats don't do that 
That's fucked up. I mean, some places do. The no, we're not talking about it, Max. Let's move on. It's, okay. it's moving. It's moving out of the meta. But one of the big um, Magic the Gathering decks that was really popular in the in the last set involved that exact mechanic. There is a, a familiar that is a cat and there's a witch's oven. And the win condition of the deck <laughs> was feeding the cat to the oven over and over and over until you win. It's. Hmm. It's a good deck, but <laughs> thematically well, when you fed the cat to the oven, you'd get food. Yes. Yeah. And then you could sacrifice food, food okay. to bring the cat back from the dead. And then you make the cat food? into food. And every time the cat comes into play, it deals damage. So you're just eating this cat and then bringing it back to life and then eating it again. It just happens over and over till you win. It's a good deck. What the fuck? You guys ever tasted <laughs> wet cat food? Wet cat food? No, no. no. Can't say I have. Else I, I have eaten some dog food before, though. But wet or dry? Uh, I was dry. It was dry. It's a big difference. Well, wet dog <laughs> food and wet cat food is probably just kind of like moist meat, is it not? It's just a big difference. Okay. I mean, I, <laughs> Max, you sound traumatized. Are you, are you are hyping you okay? up? Are you hyping up wet cat food right now, Max? Is that what's going on? You know, I mean, it's okay. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Fuck! It must be amazing then. I just, I was just curious as a person who has eaten wet cat food. Um, what flavor are we talking about? Did you eat some salmon, some tuna? Oh, it was the worst flavor. It was what? turkey and giblets flavor. Now, I if it was just turkey, I'd kind of, I'd probably try it. But the giblets is where you lost giblets. me. That's like where giblet it got bad. itself is just a disgusting word. Like if someone offers yep. me a meal and they're like, "Here's they could here's <laughs> like some wagyu steak with giblets," I'd be like, "No, nah, I'm good. I don't need to eat that. Please take that away from me." Giblets is it just not a, a, not a good word. The natural thing for people, yeah, they're curious. Why would you do that? He's an idiot. Yes, I am. Too. It was for charity <laughs> a long while back. Hmm. Uh, no, I think it was like at thirty, th- fifteen, or thirty thousand, something like that. This is many, many years ago. There's a video of it if you want to look for it. Hmm. Cassie Mexican cat hmm. food. You'll find it. It's bad. I almost threw up. <laughs> was it like a Purina or like a, a Friskies or do you remember the brand? I don't recall. Okay. I want to say probably, something probably like better in case we get some cat. Well, let's not say because I don't want if we get a cat sponsorship on Twitter for right. me raiding cats. That's I don't want to like have video footage of me shitting on a brand because then they'll That's find true, that yeah. and I wouldn't be able to get that sponsorship. So right. gotta, we got to keep all our options open here on. Uh, Where do we draw the line, JP? <clears throat> We're just worried about every sponsorship opportunity and, and casual sentence we throw off for, for comedic and entertainment's sake. Where do we draw the line? I don't know. Fuck Friskies. Whoa. It's on me. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I do not endorse that oh, statement. Wow. That statement That's on me. <laughs> Friskies, <laughs> you suck. We need someone get legal in here. We all got to sign a waiver. <laughs> for Max's I have to go uprising. change my Twitter. I have to go change my I'm Twitter crazy, header man. so that it says opinions expressed here have nothing to do with Gassy Mexican. Yeah. Um, well, let me just go and. Yeah, whew. we do. We do. Um, all right, let's talk about obscure things I've been watching. So, more sports documentaries. We got 10 minutes uh-huh. to kill. There's a sports documentary on Netflix. And if you tune in to Sam's stream last night, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about this again, probably at length. There's a show called Cheer on Netflix. And I not, highly, not cheers. Don't no, not, not cheers. cheers. Don't cheer. want cheers. cheers is okay. Good. Okay. Cheer with no S is quite incredibly good. It's about professional cheerleading in the u.s and you think that that is a little bit weird what that sh- professional cheerleaders are insane i was blown away with how <laughs> ridiculous yeah, these people are it's kind of crazy it's insane like these people play more hurt than like nfl athletes they'll like throw this i don't know 90 pound woman up in the air she'll land and crack her rib and they'll be like well you're going back up in about five seconds, so good luck. And then they just toss her back up and try not to crack her rib. And then this goes on for like six months until they get one time. They get two minutes and 15 seconds to not fuck up, and that's their entire year. And then it's over, and then the season's done. It's just one performance out of like nine months of building towards it. It's a really good it's documentary. like the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, I guess. No, I'm just saying anything like that fucks with my mind where it's just like, <clears throat> God, the mental stress, yeah. especially if you're like, you're an Olympian, you train your whole life for the moment, you fail, 
All right, you have two choices. Give up or do it all again to potentially fail in again. In four years, like, right? Like, yeah. In yeah. four years, yeah. It's, it's just anything where that's just that long buildup and so much work that just goes into like a, a, a mistake on a performance where it doesn't necessarily mean that you're shit. It's just in that moment, you were shit and no one else cares to look per- past that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, that, would, that would be an insane... I don't think I could ever do something. I don't think my mind is equipped to handle something like that. Because mm-hmm. like... Sure, if you win gold, it's probably like the best thing. But if you crash yeah. and burn, man, like that's four years of your life just gone, you know? They're just fucking yeah. thrown in the wind. It's rough. It's fucked up. It'd be rough. It'd be rough. Anyways, go watch Cheer on Netflix. That's my strange recommendation of the I'll continue the sports random documentaries. Um, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Mm-hmm. You know I what? Just, I, I just finished. Might, I just might. finished watching. Okay. I just finished watching Max eat a bunch of cat food, and I'm deeply disturbed. What brand was it? Did you <laughs> see? Did you see what I brand? No, I didn't. Just I don't. I was it like in a packet uh, or was it in a can uh, or what? It was a can, and can. he just takes a spoon. It's a fresh full can, and, and tell him, Adam, we didn't skimp. It's it was hard, a big glob, it is hard wasn't it? watching <laughs> you suffer. Like you, when I watch it, when you when you get that spoonful, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And you put it in your mouth, and I'm just like, oh. Oh, you poor bastard. I was a younger man, oh. Adam. Foolish. Is that where him. is that where it all started, Max? Is that where you just started <sighs> not hyping anything? You just gave up after yeah. you ate wet cat food? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I get it. it I mean, I, you could have led with that. We didn't have to go down this whole thing that you went down to say, <laughs> I ate wet cat food, JP. You know what's fucked up about that, too, is I remember that it was sort of it, like, we hit the goal earlier than I anticipated. Which I thought you were going to say it was right? sort of so was, good at first. <laughs> it was sort of good. <laughs> the part is I, I thought like I could be a cat. I could do this. <laughs> um, no, it was early in the broadcast. So it was like, I almost threw up as Adam can tell you, it looked like yes. for a moment there, maybe it was going to come up and it did almost like I had to stuff it down because I would remember thinking, Oh shit. If I throw up, it's all over my computer. It's all over my electronics. And we have a big problem the rest of the stream so that was literally the only thing that kept me from throwing it up you're a monster but eating right now you guys having dinner (laughs) or lunch Uh, it doesn't really bother me i can i can eat well yeah i'm usually pretty good about that too don't really bother me yeah Yeah. usually i'll probably have a pop card in about 20 minutes once adam starts talking (laughs) quick thing um i don't remember i think i watched this on a all right i watched this somewhere Somewhere. Good. Good start. On a cruise ship. Yeah, on a cruise ship. Ha, ha, Max is always on a cruise ship. Blah, 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 blah. Like the story. Um, <laughs> thank you. I was on the Red Bull channel. I guess, so hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second here. I, let's not overlook what Fuck. just happened. So God damn JP it. and Dan and Zeke and I, we can just leave now because Max is just taking shots at himself. So yeah. have a good vacation, yep. everybody. Wait Max, please. Yep. Is it our fault that Max <laughs> finds no enjoyment anymore in life because we've just like beaten him into submission? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did we After ruin Max? three years, is this our fault? I don't know. I, I think we should I look back to... on videos like of him like starting out <laughs> Court of Swords. And he's like, hey guys, what are we, we're going to play some g and Is everybody really happy? I'm happy to play. Oh, and cut he, out, dude, he like was half, sprightly. Half eyes open, just like, yeah, go on a lot of cruises. Fuck me, right? <laughs> 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 I listened to the first episode. He was pretty sprightly, to be honest. So, I think yeah. it's our fault. Oh. I think it's our I think sorry, Max. This. You were saying something. Yeah. Anyways, Max. Sorry, we interrupted. Hey, who fucking cares? Honestly, right? <laughs> 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 uh, oh man, you were what they were talking about. What, was it in Fight Club? You're the warm little center that everything gathers around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> yep. I was Don't watching die, the Red Bull Channel, and there was like a there was a documentary because you've been you've been super into documentaries. It was like a little mini. Yeah. It was like 20, 30 minutes. Okay. About coffee. And like these brewing competitions that they have in California and how brewing they, competitions. They follow really? like five different like, you know, baristas and, and people that either just That's really cool. are good at brewing coffee or have a shop or are like and it's just it's crazy. Like you I feel like you could get really into that because I was really into it. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Well anything where it's, it's like some, some it's a documentary about something or someone who's at the like top of whatever their thing is. I'm kind that's kinda I think that's yeah. the niche that I'm into. So what's the name of that? Do you remember? Nope. 
Well, <laughs> shit, Max. Red Bull coffee documentary. I'm sure you'd get it. Okay, yeah, I Red can Bull. find it with the Google. Do they talk coffee. about the cat shit coffee in there? Going back to cat. Maybe. Have you seen that? I don't know if they did. <clears throat> I do know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Isn't it like more of like a monkey kind of thing? It's well, I think there's cats. there's cat poop coffee and there's also civet cat coffee. Or, or civet poop hmm. coffee, which is a, it's like a marsupial i don't know that's a kangaroo i don't think uh i don't think i think it's a a, i think a civet is technically still a form of cat yeah is it okay it's a it's a feline thing yeah what the fuck is this thing trying to find it oh it does kind of look like a weasel doesn't it yeah or maybe yeah no it was red bull channel i'm pretty sure i don't know i'll I'll get back to you on that okay let me know um let me know but it's good (laughs) it's good okay they take it very seriously yeah i'm sure they do I'm, I'm interested to watch. Do they go through the entire like growing process? Is that part of the competition? Do they like no, grow the, the coffee? I mean, they might they, they, they might like talk about like where judges? they source certain oh, okay. where they sort source certain stuff from, but it eventually culminates in them all in like a competition where they literally they're not just like brewing coffee and like here you go taste it it's good. It's like they have to have like this speech and they're practicing their speech about how they're going to do it and the different like different servings of coffee and if you fuck up like even just like a little bit of a drip. The judges will notice and you'll get super penalized and stuff. And one of them like is just talking like, ah, you know, when I'm roasting my coffee, I just, it's weird. Like if I'm just having a bad day and my energy's off, I feel like my roast is just worse. Cause I'm just putting that, <laughs> they get like, some of them are like really fucking in there and out there. And I'm like, eh, it's interesting. Anytime <laughs> doesn't really matter what the topic is. Anytime something deep dives hardcore into there and the production and stuff is decent and they cut back to all this stuff and it culminates into like a competition kind of deal. Perfect. I'll, I'll watch it. Go watch him. Cheer. Down. Go to Netflix tonight. Watch first episode of Cheer. That it's six episodes. It goes quick. That's exactly what you yeah. just described. It's exactly that. It's a good formula. It's. I really, know it's a yeah. formula, but I. It's. I, it's good. I like it. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Uh, all right, we got a minute. Who wants to talk? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Max have kind of fulfilled <laughs> our quota. I'm looking at Dan and Zeke over there. <laughs> Quiet. This Just the little one minute. This is really, the, conver- really this is the conversational okay. equivalent. This is the conversational equivalent of throwing a football into a room and no one catching it. It just bouncing off the floor. Like, yeah. hey guys, who wants to play some ball? Thump. That's Thump. true. No, That's true. nobody. No. Okay. <laughs> little help. Little help. That's true. <laughs> Got eight, seven, five, <sighs> four. Nah. Sorry. Again, now that I've been playing old, we I've filled that pre-show. I have no mouth that I must scream is great. I'll talk about it tomorrow. Zeke, Zeke, yeah. how was uh, how was Dune? I watched you play it for a little bit when you were still coming to terms with like the kind of game it was. How how yeah. was it? Did you enjoy it? What'd you think? It was actually it was pretty good, but uh, it, it's a management game, so the, yeah. uh, and I I wasn't really like those don't really jibe with me. There's there's a few game types that are really like. Not they have to be something really special for me to get into, like a management game. Like the only one I actually kind of got into was uh Rimworld, like where you have to manage like different things and you know that kind of shit. But I mean, for what it was, it was great. And I think I got like I got one full broadcast out of it, so like seven ish, seven and a half hours. And uh I got a lot of the like the the th- nostalgic cutscenes from the movie that were all like super pixelated and shit. Yeah. But I think I got all the enjoyment that I was going to get out of it, honestly. So I did one cast and switched it up. It's yeah, it's a little it's a little stealthy, right? Because if you look at any of the screenshots, you're like, this is clearly an adventure game. Like there's little guys and there's like a thing and you and then you play it and you're like, wait a second. I'm just issuing orders to soldiers. Oh, this isn't fun at all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, it's good that it's short. You get your yeah. you get your fill and then you're like, yeah, OK, OK, thanks, guys. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and and like it was it was an entire cast of people like just quoting the movie, just over and over. Yeah, it was right. great, a lot of fun. You know, Max, I'm I'm curious. I have some sweet potato wrapped with duck here. <laughs> what do you think this would yeah. taste like? How do you, what do you? Was that a dog treat? That's a dog treat. Yeah, that I got for Ollie. What do you? That's probably pretty good. You're in the danger sounds... zone, JP. There's only one way to pretty find good. out. I don't really like sweet potatoes, and they're also dry. They're like candied or something. I don't know. You and your dog candied sweet potatoes? I don't think that they're healthy. candied, but they're like hard. Mm-hmm. Like they've been they're dried like, yeah, out. They're probably like freeze dried or something. Yeah. Something like that. He really likes just dehydrated. Yeah. Not freeze dried. Dehydrated. See, I shook the bag and now he's over here at the fucking door, old hyper as shit. You got to give him one now. 
You gotta get one. But then I have to open the door. the door and Adam talk. The door. I'll, I'll give him one when Adam's talking. Adam, start talking. I mean, you could just you could just run the recap. Oh right, we got to do that's that cool. recap. That's that's right. Right. <laughs> I know That'd it felt like we did. That's how exhausting that conversation yeah, that was. <laughs> God, Jesus, talking to Max is just Previously, fuck. I- on Court of Swords. Berg and Ramus share a moment of sadness over the loss of their friend before returning to the fortress, where Maharib and Ten Pillars have joined the Embers in the Great Hall. Bahath has taken control of the fortress, as befits his status as one of the chosen of Imix. Bahath tells the assembled Embers that this is an age of conflagration, and that they intend to burn the earth and remind the world why it fears the touch of flame. Berg leaves the room when Vani does to check on her. She's sickly, weak and admits now that she hid the secret cost of the ritual, her own life now swiftly dwindling. Nisha, the eldritch mother, high priestess of the Embers, is ready to pass on her power, but Vani must first survive the night. Berg grants her the gift given to him by heaven, a pearl of light that will protect her and ensure her survival. We learn of Maharib's past via Ramus's prayer magic. The Hoth was once a weapon, a terrible sword that impelled Maharib to mythical heights of both prowess and terrible cruelty, none of which he remembers now, having given up the memory of his past to the void itself. Finally, the party confronts Bahath, knowing that in their quest to defeat Heaven, they will need his help. Ramus resists the will and flames of Bahath, and in doing so, proves his worth. Unable to kill Ramus outright, Bahath instead decides to ally with the party. Though flame they remain, and burn they must. Whoa. <laughs> so before we get started, uh, I need goals from uh, Ten Pillars and Berg. The two of you only have two goals on my on my list. Oh, God. So nice. Ten Pillars, do you know what you want your, your third one to be? I have returned to Grave Dirt with a newly sold unnamed and convinced Bahath that our paths are aligned for now. Um, yeah, what I have a third goal, but I'm not think? sure if I like it all that much. <clears throat> well, you can just say um, what it is and we can talk it's, about uh, it. Th- it's find a use for the excess gold that I have because I have like 10,000 plus gold right now. So I'm wondering, like, because be, that would be definitely be, be on nice, his mind. Like, nice how can I use to have <laughs> right, yeah. all this money? I have <laughs> um, first fantasy world problems. That's called being a Twitch yeah, streamer, right? Zeke. We all have, you know. <laughs> Right. What am I going to do with all these piles of money? Um, (laughs) Twitch just hands you a pile of gold when you sign that contract. It's a big bag of it. Yeah, Yeah. Bezos coins. Um, more like ten thousand pillars of gold. (laughs) It's it's a uh, they're very small pillars, I guess. Then, Um, if yeah, I mean, like find a use for my gold is kind of a mushy goal. Um, No, but. But you know you could you could still you could still put that for now if you want to, and then see if you come up with some more specific version of it later. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me think about it for a second. Okay, I'm gonna put find a use for all this gold. I'm gonna put it on your list, and then you yeah. tell me if you come up with a different one. Um, and then uh, Berg, I have uh. Explore uh, the the deeper meaning behind the vision, right? That vision you saw when when you touched the axe, uh, and yeah. then uh, find a way to prevent future possession. Uh, what do you want your third goal to be? I didn't forget about the goal. I just literally am having a hard time thinking of a third one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Suggestions. Uh, uh, well, so here. so usually what what I'll do if if I'm in this position, I can't figure out what like a, th- a thing my character wants. Uh, look at other characters and what they want or are trying to accomplish and see if there's a way you can kind of like attach yourself to that goal. So like you could have a goal mm-hmm. that is related to uh, Ramus, right? About uh, spreading harmony, if that's something you believe or uh, something like that. You could have a goal that ties into what 10 pillars is trying to do, which is like f- finish up, tie up the loose ends with uh, grave dirt. Right. You could write a goal about Bahath or Vani or um, uh, Awut. Uh, those are always uh, useful ways to sort of tie yourself to the world. Um, but yeah, right now, right now, what we're was the kind of like, I know we did the recap. What was the like last yeah, yeah. point again? Just like, where did we finish? Uh, it was on Court of Swords. <laughs> God, God damn it, JP. Ramus, share a moment of sadness. 
<laughs> I mean, I know generally, but I'm just trying to figure out exactly. Said it's going to be four hours of the about. same two minutes of me talking forever. So yeah, the last thing that we saw was Ramus uh, submitting submitting himself to Bahath's terrible flame aura and earning right, Bahath's yeah. grudging respect. Right where we learned that Bahath has power. Power and drive, but no direction, right? Bahath just is like, I want to break mm. things and light shit on fire. And Ramus was like, you have to, there has to be a reason for that dummy. And Bahath right, was like, I hate you. Go to hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Bahath, Bahath has been uh, cowed, but not, not like controlled. Uh, Bahath has kind of like grudgingly been like, all right, fine. Like you're going to give me things to burn. Let's, let's do it. So yeah. So that's something that's, that's going on right now. Yes, Bahath is massively tsundere. It's true. It's very true. Something tells me we're going to be dealing with grave dirt or something with grave dirt soon. So maybe a goal centered around that. Yeah. So so here's what Berg knows, right? Um, the right now, the people, the the embers of Imix are in a, a growth period in the sense that they've sent out emissaries into the world to find other members of. Uh, of the cult, other followers of Imix that can be drawn back to uh, to this place and then trained and empowered to eventually go and, and fight uh, Grave Dirt and her undead goons. So if you all do nothing to change that course, that's what's going to happen is the Embers are going to go to war with the Mara simply because they're the nearest opponent. Um, unless you do something to to change that or... I guess do that for them, right? Or sabotage their efforts. Um, but yeah, what do you? Uh, 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 maybe what maybe just a goal that, and right? uh, help help Ramus um, steer the embers in a way that's beneficial for us. However, you want to phrase that, because I, th- I that's all, that's help align the embers to Harmony's ultimate goal. I guess, or to Harmony's interests. Something yeah. Like so that. what uh, what Ramus what Ramus wants right now is to. Yeah, what is his one right uh, now? Ramus wants to to become a better public speaker, right? Ramus wants to be able to like convince people of his ideas, uh, and, and then classes. also recruit, you guys. yeah, right. <laughs> also recruit uh, recruit some goons to do that uh, for him because Ramus recognizes you can't really even Jesus needed his apostles, uh, and then also convince Maharib that harmony is the way of the future. Uh, so right now, Ramus is about kind of personal growth and convincing those closest to him to, to come on board. Uh, I think the the actual spreading of uh, Harmony will be the next phase. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Doesn't help me at all. And now we're just stuck on me with this fucking goal attempt. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, we're not... My... We're not... <clears throat> Well, the thing is, we're not just talking about like what Max thinks Berg wants or what Berg wants. We're we're talking about this is the this is and JP and I were talking about this during the Patreon Q and A today. We're at a point where I'm kind of like letting you guys guide the game, which is harder mm-hmm. to write goals because you're not reacting to something. You have to kind of think about like the future for the for the character, which is definitely more challenging. So don't don't feel bad about that. You can, if you want, just leave the goal blank for now. I mean, it, it denies you the chance to get experience from it, but something might come up during the session uh, that seems like it could be a goal, uh, and you can write that at the end. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if, um, if there's nothing that's jumping up for you. Does, does Berg like Vani and want to, like... No, I was just I was literally just about to say, um, yeah. maybe make sure Vani stays safe. Something to that, because uh, Berg is interested and invested in making sure that that, that she's going to be okay, whether it be she stays here and and continues to help. I'm beginning the positive. I'm beginning or, to think that Berg has a type, because this is the second Genasi that Berg has been like, I have to I have to take care of this precious elemental baby. Like it's there's two in a row. So if Berg if Berg gets invested in an Earth Genasi and an Air Genasi, you got the whole the whole set. You like the Pretty Pokemon soon he's going to start talking like this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, yes, protect Vani. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing. Like, protect. How do you want to phrase that? What does Berg want? Because she's not in any immediate, like, physical danger, right? Like, she's, you've ensured that she's going to live. Um, right. And then... She's going to go through the process of becoming the the eldritch mother of the of the Ember's Fortress. And then from there, her job is to guide 
Bahath, right? She's the one that is supposed to kind of guide the flame if if that happens. So, okay. Um. So that's what Vani's going to be up to. I don't know. The, the, the phrasing of the, the, the goal is so important, too, because then if it's phrased a stupid way, then it's like, well, you didn't really do that. Essentially, I just want to make sure, Berg wants to make sure that, that Vani's transition to her new thing will be um, successful. And whether that be safeguarding her from Bahath, because, you know, it's going to be her kind of trying to rein in Bahath, whatever, but trying to have it in a broad sense is, is kind of where. Yeah, how like about how about uh, safeguard Vani from the dangers of her new position? That's fine. That's not, That works. Okay. We got there. Yay. Yeah, I mean that's that's fine because it's it's sometimes it's easy to think about like oh this is what the character wants but I don't know how to phrase this as a goal that's totally yeah. that's mm-hmm. totally a thing so I'm mm-hmm. I'm happy to yeah and it, well you. because I don't know how to phrase it I do know how to phrase things oddly enough but it's it's within the, <laughs> the constraints where you're going with <laughs> no it's it's within the current this is me saying essentially I'm not stupid just goals are important in how they're phrased I don't yes, want to lose true. experience. Right. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's like, it's like trying to cast a wish spell, right? Like the phrasing does matter. Um, and you want to be able to get as much XP out of it as possible. That's why I so. consult you because yeah. you're the DM. So you have a better idea of how to maybe. Phrase yeah. Them, so and I, I don't, I don't want, yeah, I don't want it. I don't want it to seem like goals are like a thing where I'm like, ha ha ha. Now you won't get XP. Like I want you to get XP. I just want to know what it is that Berg wants so that I can challenge it. Right. Like, Putting sure. some danger on Vani was going to happen mm-hmm. no matter what, but now it's important to Berg yeah. specifically, and it's more to you as as a so method of advancing. Super going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, she was going to be in danger no matter what because everybody is all the time. Um, yeah. Zeke, did you uh, did you do you want to refine your goal? Or are you good with the the yep. explore the financial possibilities of this ten thousand gold? No, I actually um, I thought of something that I wanted to do, and I didn't know how to phrase it in, in a way that actually made it something I could accomplish. I was going okay. to say like, find out if I have any new orders from the court of coins, but I've rephrased it into discover and carry out any new orders from the court of coins. Okay. And I know that's kind of shitty that to put it on you, but no, no, I know. I know what the court of coins wants. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, so I think now uh, it, it's again, as I said, it's sort of on on you guys what direction you want things to to take, right? So the last scene that we saw, you you had essentially bent Bahath, if not to your will, at least away from actively being opposed to you, right? Bahath now has a degree of respect for the group, especially Ramus, as uh, being capable of enduring. Uh, the enduring the fire, right? You've 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 undergone this brief initial trial uh, of Bahath. Bahath still wants to burn shit, but will listen to you, Ramus especially, when you advise them on where to direct that that flame. Um, Vani uh, is uh, resting or rests overnight. Um, Berg, you know that she's going to be okay. <clears throat> the the rest of the the rest of the um. The fortress isn't quite so certain. Awud is in way over his head and the world continues to, to move along. So maybe, I don't know, Berg, would you, would you go check on Vani the next day or are you more like she'll be okay? And, and you, you just kind of mm, probably check her on her own devices. Yeah. Probably check on her you know, just okay. to see, not even necessarily just physically if she's okay, like where she's at mentally. And if uh, there's been any other development from, Old crabby pants, her mentor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, what was her name? Uh Nisha, I think. I think old crabby um, pants. Yeah, Nisha. Crabby pants. That's the translation into common. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh yeah. okay. All right. So Berg, it is the it is the the next day. And this place at its at its best feels a bit abandoned, right? It is a massive dwarven hall made up of perhaps dozens of uh, of floors of which you've only seen what three i think um and while reclamation of the dwarven hall could be a priority bahath wants to build an army and so as a result the the embers of imix have from this place gone out like like 
sparks on the wind to set fires elsewhere. Some head north to the uh, to the capital, well, the standing capital, uh, to go and, and spread the word of Imix among the civilized people. Uh, others go out into the, the riverlands to see if there are any villagers still alive or hidden cabals uh, that still remain in hiding despite the northward crusade of the March of the Dead. Um, there is no, there's been no real sign or signal, no change from the monastery, though it's been some time, uh, since the last time you were there and the place itself now feels empty. It feels much more like the sort of mausoleum crypt you would expect, uh, if you were delving into a dungeon, right? The holes are empty. The, the sounds of, uh, of people coming and going, they're not, it's not present anymore. This place feels a lot more like a tomb. Um, now, Berg, when you when you were, uh, shall we say, in in service uh, to uh, to others, was this a place you'd ever been like something like this? Or were you more like employed in the like the outdoors? Um, I think the majority of his servitude um was was outdoor work but i do think that there were brief times where he would be transferred with other you know with other slaves that that uh to like a mine or something like that to special projects or whatever that that you know mm. to a regularly it's like a mine's hitting an area where they're having trouble getting through uh and they need more manpower kind of thing they would have um grabbed him and yeah and, and there, there are plenty of that. so there are plenty of nasty things that live in the in the dark, deep places of the uh, of the world that uh, a young a young warrior like Berg would have been called on to fight. So, yeah, that totally makes sense. OK, so, yeah, this again, this this rings eerily familiar in the sense that it is a partially reclaimed dwarven ruin. Uh, and I think right now, aside from a few people who are like maybe too sick or too elderly or too young to leave, it's really just you and Bahath, Vani and Awut, and a smattering of uh, of elders and children. Um, I think Doug is probably still around because Doug's he's cult adjacent, but hasn't really bought into the the. Right. You know, he he's, makes he's, food he's for the cult. He's a member of the truck. cult. Yeah, yeah. He's a food yeah, truck. Yeah, he's yeah. he's, he's just the doing food a business. truck. Doug's parked, a business. Yeah, he's man. parked outside okay. the temple. Yeah, yeah, he's just here to do business, <laughs> not cult like activity. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, so you're, you're traveling the hall, you're walking the, the halls in the, in the early morning and, uh, it is, yeah, eerily quiet. Um, there are of course flames burning, uh, in the, uh, the, the sconces up on the walls and, uh, yeah, you're, you're headed to, I guess, Vani's room to, to see how she's doing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so you, you make your way there. Um, since it's, since time has passed since the last episode, right? You've had a chance to rest. So anybody who's not at full hit points or abilities or whatever, you've had your long rest. So you can, you can go ahead and do that. So, uh, yeah. So Berg, you arrive at, uh, at Vani's, Vani's room. Um, and you, you wouldn't know it from the, from the outside, unless you knew which room it was. These, these rooms all kind of seem the same. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the door, the door is shut. Big stone door is, uh, is closed. Um, there's no sign of, uh, of anyone being around. What do you do? Yeah. Just give it like a little rap tap. Okay. All right. Uh, so you hear some sort of shuffling on the other side and, um, there's some, there's some footsteps. Somebody mumbles like, hang on a second. And then the the door opens. Uh, somebody pulls it on the other side, and you see you see Vani, and she is standing in front of you. She's her hair is all like messy, and uh, she's kind of bleary eyed. She's got the the cover from her bed like just wrapped around her shoulders, uh, and she's just standing like barefoot on the stone. She looks up at you and kind of blinks a couple of times. She's like. Is everything okay? What time is it? Um, I, I don't know what time it is, but I, I just wanted to see if, how you're doing, but you sleep if you're tired. She shakes her head and, uh, and she says, um, no, 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 it's, it's, I'm, 
come come in and she turns around and goes uh goes back in her room leaves the door open yeah you like kind of slow like kind of hesitantly and then he's like all right i guess i'll go in okay close the door behind right. him. yeah and you've you've been you've been here before you've seen vani's room it's like kind of a like a bit of a cluttered mess there's a bunch of like miscellaneous uh, half finished like poultices laying around uh, several scrolls that are just like stuck in a barrel. Um, and yeah, her, her bed is obviously like really messy and um, she comes in and uh, she gestures at, um, at the, the bed and she's like, have a seat. I'm just going to get dressed. And she walks over to a, there's like a standing. It looks out of place. It's a lacquer, um, like folding lacquer, basically a wall, a wooden wall with mm. um, panels on it. And though they're faded and chipped, the paint on the panels tell a story that you recognize. You've seen it before. Um, it's about uh, like a lonely fisherman who accidentally catches a um, like a crane in his net and then he he lets the crane go and the crane turns out to be a god and grants him wishes. And it's a whole like fairy tale. And you, you've seen it before, um, but it's all like old and chipped. And she walks around behind it and uh, you hear her kind of like rustling around back there. Uh, and she uh, and so she says from the other side of the screen, uh, she says. I, I don't think I've slept that deeply my whole life. Whatever you did yesterday worked good good that's um you needed rest yeah i think i think there's more to it than that but definitely feel better mm. maybe but happy you will be alive. <laughs> yeah, me too. So is that why you're here? You just came to check up on me? Mm. Yes, but also concerned about you and Bath, this new role you take on. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. Uh, hang on. And uh, she she comes out from behind the screen, and she's dressed now. She's wearing a uh, red fabric, like a wrap, basically. Um, and so she's got it wrapped around her, and she's pinning it on her uh, at her shoulder as she she comes around. And you can see really clearly now the um the like opal like embedded kind of in her her uh her sternum and it it has this in the light uh it has this beautiful kind of fire like flicker uh, it's got these little flecks of green in it and she she comes out and is kind of like she's got a comb and she's kind of like getting it running it through her hair and uh and she she says um I, do you i mean that kind of thing the and she like taps it and kind of shrugs like I, don't, I have no idea what just what happened. It, it really seems more like a like a Ramus trick. How did you do that? What did you do exactly? Hmm. I uh, don't know exactly how I did it, but. I gave something of me to you when when I heard you were going to die. I did not like that. No one liked death except for mm, grave dirt, whatever. But I remember thinking maybe I can help. Maybe I can save. So I thought that over and over 
and focused. And then, when I hugged you, I thought, give what I can to help. Did not know it would be that. I don't even know what that is. But that is magic, I suppose. Weird. Hmm. She says something uh, in Celestial, and you understand that language, right? So you you understand what she Mm -hmm. says, but you also recognize the saying as something that people say without necessarily understanding word for word. Like it's, it's clearly an idiom in another language. So she says it and what it means in celestial is essentially, uh, all things are possible in the world, right? Like that it's, it's essentially a statement saying like, if you can imagine it, it can be done. Uh, Mm. but she may not know the literal translation of it. She just knows what it means. And so she says, she says that and, uh, absolutely sort of touches the, the stone. Uh, and she, uh, she says, well, whatever you did, it worked. I, uh, I was almost certain that I was going to die. And now mm. I, I actually feel kind of great. I was sure you were going to die too. That is why I did that. Glad you feel great though. New life. I I think I'm gonna need it. This this manifestation of Bahath is uh, aggressive, and soon it's gonna be my job to try to guide it. You you and your friends you you gave us a gift. I I, I don't know. I don't know the religion uh, of your, your people. I, I was raised uh, among the embers. All I really know is Imix. But for us, a manifestation like this is a once in a human lifetime. It's, it's, a, it's a very big deal, uh, Berg. And she kind of looks at the floor. I just hope I'm up to the task. I think you'll do fine. And if things get tough, well, maybe you try. Maybe I gave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> she, she she laughs and like covers her face and she's like, I, I can't, I can't do that. That's and she's kind of like, she's blushing and she's just like, no, get out of here. You're in, dude. Don't blow this. <laughs> Ask if you can stoke your fire. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, do that. He doesn't even know what the word stoke means. Oh my god, this is just this is just like a weird, like a horny version of the Jedi what? ghosts. Like Our, use your dick, Luke. Yeah, I like to imagine <laughs> Ramus and Ten Pillars have been using message this entire time to talk to Bird. <laughs> And coach them through this conversation back in our room, all scrying into the room. So a little Cyrano action. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell her oh my God, Cyrano to Bergerac. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was so good. It should have been mine. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zeke. Thanks for the assist on that one. Um, yeah. So do you do you say anything? She she gets embarrassed. Like like no. Like that's 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 silly. I can't. I can't. Uh, and kind of like looks yeah, at the floor. Berg, like, I yeah. think maybe just goes like, "You're strong, stronger now, but strong before. You'll do fine." And if she, not, well, we here. So when you when you say that, when you're like, "Yeah, you're you're strong now," right? She she's kind of like looking at her hands, and she's like, "You know, I I feel strong." Yeah, I'm stronger than you now. And she like gives you a little shove, like, like pushes oh, you like, yeah, shit, see, now I'm tough. Touching <laughs> him. 
<laughs> yeah, so she just gives you a little like playful shove, like, hey, yeah, now maybe I'm starting you. Maybe to punch mistake. her through the wall. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah, you're not. Upper, yeah, <laughs> uppercuts are like a Mortal Kombat character. She flies through the ceiling. <laughs> Roll initiative. Yeah, what's I mean? What's um, your reaction to that? Like, do you do you back do you back away? Do you like? Because I mean. We don't really know, right? How Berg reacts to stuff like this. So she, yeah, she like gives you a little, a playful shove. Uh, and then how does, how does, how do you react? I think Berg just kind of like, kind of hams it up a little bit. Like, huh? like mm, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And she, she like kind of flexes a little. She's like, yeah. Hmm. And gives you a, gives you a look. And, uh, and then she, uh, she says, um, so, uh, what about you? And then Ramus and, and Maharib and, and uh, the, other, the other one. Are you going to stick around or? Mm. Probably not for a little, little while longer. Mm. Oh. Much to think of. I mean that no, that makes do. sense. Yeah. I mean I I'm sure I'm sure you I'm sure you have a lot to do. Uh hero stuff or whatever. Mm. Hero. Never liked that day. That word. <sighs> How come? Too much. Yeah, she asked of hero. Too much pressure. I don't like that. Hero failed. Everyone sad. Erg fail. Well, Erg fail. That it. Yeah, and she's nodding as you uh, as you as you speak, and she says. Um, well, you're, you're going to have to get used to it. In times like this, people are desperate. They're looking for someone, something to believe in. And as soon as you do anything nice for them, they're going to start thinking that, you know, you're going to keep doing it. But I, I guess that's why you keep moving, huh? So nobody can get too attached. <laughs> I can... She's trying yeah. so hard, Max, and Berg is just fucking stonewalling her on this. <laughs> I wonder, though, like, does Berg know what's going on here? Does Berg know that she's trying to be like, you should stay and help us? And like, I would like it's the fucking Han and Leia thing where <laughs> but you're not as smart as Han is, I guess. But she's she's trying to tell maybe, you, like, stay because maybe we I want you inside, here. I want you to Berg, stick around. Berg is a little. Let's roll an inside, yeah. maybe just to see. OK. This is it. The ship either sets sail or it crashes. All right. You can, you can take that 13 and you can decide what to do with it from here. Um, but yeah, so she says, I guess that's why you move around a lot, right? So nobody can mythologize you, basically. I move around and go where needed Ramus and Harmony and all that. <sighs> but part of me used to think of more. More than and what? He like looks at he like looks at looks at her when he says that. Yeah. Yeah, and then she she meets your meets your gaze. Uh, and says, uh, and she has this like very, in she's very all about like very intense eye contact. So whenever you like, like meet her, her, she like very burning, uh, burning looking. So she, yeah, she makes eye contact with you and she says, what do you mean more? People who care about me and I care about them. but. I always die. You can see him like flash to like just anger. 
Yeah, for a moment. yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. she's not cowed by that. She like I think a lot of people when they see even a hint of Berg being like Berg angry, like it's like take a step back, like give the big scary orc some room. She doesn't move. She nods, and she uh, she says. Um, there's going to be a lot more of that, I think. Bahath. Well, you heard the speech. But that's why we become strong, right? That's why we learn to fight so that people don't have to die. But sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes they do anyway. Mm. Yes, they do. But th that's the thing. And this, she, she points at you, and you can you can feel her switching from, like, a personal approach. There's a little bit of her kind of, like, teacher voice that starts to come in, the, like, shaman mm -hmm. voice. Uh, and she, she says, that's one of the lessons of fire. The brighter it burns, the faster we use the fuel. And so if you think of life as the fuel for your fire, she looks down and she says, well, it's not very comforting, but I guess it just, you burn pretty bright and you've lasted this long. So that's got to be worth something. Hmm. Maybe. Thank you, Bonnie. For 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 what? Well, everything. Helping before. She... Talking now. Make me feel better. Hard thing. Well, it's to the do. least. It's the least I could do, given that probably without you, I'd be dead. Then again. I guess I probably wouldn't have done the ritual without you. So let's call it even. Mm. Even then. Or gets up off the bed and like approaches her and gives like goes to like give her like a hug. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the emotional subtext of this hug? Because how she reads this will determine what she does next. Is this a yeah, like, no. you're cool, little sister hug? Or is, is it like, yeah. No, it's more romantic than that. It's, this is Berg. Berg doesn't just flat out, like, just kiss somebody. You know what I mean? Like, he's. Oh, she does. Not super. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, Berg, doesn't, Berg doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, as soon as she picks up on that subtext, as soon as she's like, oh, okay, cool. It worked. Like, you did figure it out. Uh, she probably, she probably sighs and it's like, oh, finally. Uh, and then, yeah, she totally, she has to get up on her tiptoes to do it. Uh, but yeah, she, she kisses you. Uh, and that's probably where we, we fade chat. You can imagine whatever you like next. Um, but meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, uh, Ramus, you, uh, you awake from having been, <laughs> spent your evening being terribly burned by a, 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 a horrific God. Um, you feel much better in the morning. Uh, and now, now it's, now there's the, the whole world laid out before you. Uh, what do you do, Ramus, when you, when you wake up in the morning? What is, what does the beginning of your day look like? I think, um, I would gather Maharib and 10 pillars and try to figure out what we want to do next. It's like, we've kind of taken, uh, her down a notch or him down a notch. Yeah. And now we need to figure out what we want to do with that. I would want to talk to them about that. Okay. All right. Uh, so unless, unless Maharib or 10 pillars are unavailable for this early morning strategy meeting, uh, I think we can just, we can just kind of cut to that where it's like the three of you in, I assume 10 pillars room because that's where we hold meetings. Um, yeah. Does that sound good? Okay. Do we know where Berg went? Did he make it known to us that he was leaving? I don't imagine that he did. No. Okay. Uh, I don't think he did. No. So you just kind of left in the morning, snuck out. Was it? Were you yeah, like sneaking yeah, like, out? 
Or you just leave well, you don't all you uh, don't all sleep in the same room or anything. Oh, so. that's true. Yeah, we all have our own yeah. rooms. Okay, so yeah, he wasn't yeah. sneaking by any means. So if you saw somebody in the halls or whatever, like somebody might have seen or go, you know, if you asked around. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah, I have no problem meeting with with Ramus and Ten Pillars. We're probably back in Ten Pillars' room since that's been the point of conversion thus far. Okay. Yeah. So I think maybe we, maybe we start in on, uh, the, it's like the shot of the, the hallway, this big, massive, like dwarven hall. And we hear a faint squeaking sound as if, uh, from the wheel of a cart. And we see, uh, Doug pushing, pushing a cart and on it there, uh, there is a, a tray covered by a, a metal, a uh, metal dish. And so we see him kind of whistling to himself, walking down the hall, comes around a corner, uh, comes up to one of the doors, uh, pushes it open with his shoulder, and into the room uh, he goes. And we see Ten Pillars and Ramus and Maharib, and you're you're in the room sitting around a, a table. Doug comes in, uh, and uh, and he's like, it's uh, like, well, you can't can't have a meeting without breakfast. And so he like starts putting out uh, uh, little bowls of rice and uh, and food. And uh, and he says uh, he's like, don't don't worry about me. I'm just I'm, I'm I'll I'll back away from your super secret meeting. I just want to make sure everybody got food and also everybody left. And now I don't have anyone to cook for. And this place is sort of creeping me out. My room is like way at the other end of the hall. And I I I think there was a dwarf ghost wandering around there last night. So it's just honestly really nice to see you guys again. Anyway, secret meeting. I know. I'll just I'll 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 go. But enjoy your um. Just leave the bowls on the. I'll come get the cart late. You know what? Never mind. I'm out. Just have a good meeting, everybody. And Doug just like very slowly backs out of the room, bowing, and then disappears. As he as he's leaving, I just yell, "Thank you, Doug." Mm-hmm. I like that man. I like Doug. Doug's good. <laughs> I reach over and grab one of the bowls. This is just more noodles. Um, I think the breakfast that he would make for you would probably be like uh, a bowl of rice and some like fermented, some pickles, like fermented vegetables and like a soup, like a broth. So there'd be like a spicy broth. Okay. Yeah. I grab one of the bowls, toss it to 10 pillars and grab another one, put it in my place and hand the last one to Ramus. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to imagine instead of toss, you handed it to him because if you tried to toss a bowl of soup to 10. Well, it's one of those things where there's out. probably a table. So it like hits the table. Then I kind of yeah. like slide it across. Yeah. And you slide it over to him. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm not just like fucking throwing bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a bowl of soup. <laughs> Fuck ten you, pillars. 10 pillars. Take the goddamn breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're I in the room. You're coming. Free. I have the robe of eyes. <laughs> 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 ah, I've got soup in my eyes. All of them. <laughs> All of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that that is a funny point. Like, if you spilled soup on your robe of eyes, would you be like, ah, it's in my eyes? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I we know need, light effects. Let's ask like Jeremy light Crawford. Spell? Let's go ahead. Let's hit him up on Twitter. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Or what if you eat something spicy, like the noodles, and you touch, you know, you just put your hands to your side. Are you, you like, wipe, wipe your, your hands, hands on your eyes? Yeah. If you wipe it on the cloak, you're fucked. You gotta be careful. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Awesome. <laughs> Dangerous robe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, toss out the the food and sit back down. Boog mm-hmm. joining us. I don't know where he is. I'm probably staring at a fourth bowl that's just sitting there. There's probably like steam coming off of it. Hmm. No, he looked at me differently when I came back into the room yesterday. Was I just was I seeing something that wasn't there? Did he say anything while I was gone? In my experience, that one takes a while to process everything, and there's been a lot of information just he's been bombarded with, so I'm guessing he's taking a while to work through it. Maybe that's what he's doing this morning, in fact. Hmm. There's a lot to think about, and, you know, it takes him longer. He nice. sometimes likes to take walks out in nature. He likes it out there. Mm. He's taking a walk in nature, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Probably rummaging through the jungle right now. 
He's probably doing his morning um, workout, if you know what I'm saying. Euphemisms. Can I make yes, an insight check yes. to see if they're just flat out lying? Because I got two kind of different answers of varying degree there. I don't know if I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think neither of them. I think neither of them know where Berg is. Well, Ramus, it, was, it was more the question it, of like, did he say something while I was gone? Is what I was is what uh, Larry was fishing for. I got kind of a hmm. different answer there. Uh, I'll roll insight. I don't know if you guys want to roll perception. Okay. I rolled a three, so it doesn't matter actually, unless you guys really. <laughs> okay, fuck yeah, up, you have no, you have no idea what to think. I'll or, just or yeah, believe. take your reasons from face value. Oh, mm. Makes sense. Take a big bite of them, the food. So, uh, what, uh, what's next? I don't want to be around fires for a while. That was a lot of fire last night. Mm. It worked, though. Mm-hmm. Did you know it was going oh. to work? I was hoping it would. Mm. I never asked you about this before, Ramus, but after you went into the fire, I saw it. I was there, obviously. Hold on. Let me turn down my mic threshold. I'm getting cut off. One second. <laughs> There we go. Something stood out to me that uh, I'd always noticed, but never meant or never uh, mentioned it before. But that handprint on your face. There, I'm sure there's a story behind that. What? Yes, uh, Agni, the daughter of Imix touched me there and burnt my flesh. She, my mind melted with herbs for a, a minute. And ever since, fire doesn't hurt as much. Remus, touched by a god. <laughs> I'd like to say it surprises me, but it does not. I've told you my stories are many, and almost none would be believed. Do you think, after surviving the fire, do you have a a working relationship, so to speak, with Bahath? A respect, I, I saw there was a respect earned, but do you think that we could convince it to our to the rightness of our claim of our path when i was looking i it seemed like it didn't know how to do what i was asking it to do like it only knows how to do one thing and thinking outside of that box was something it couldn't handle I don't know if we could ever convince it fully to like work with us, but we might be able to guide it where we earn what we want. I don't know if it has the capability to think outside of those parameters. We worked together in the past. I just wonder if it might be the place where I fit in. Not necessarily to guide it, but to work alongside Bahath. So the context here is interesting because because Maharib says, I've worked with Bahath before, which, Ramus, the context you have is in a war crimes kind of way. I mean, Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know in what ways, just that it's happened. I just know that that's a thing that people have told me has occurred. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I wonder, do Ramus and Ten Pillars have a reaction to that in any way? Because he basically said, like, yeah, I've worked with Bahath before, and you know that means like and and nobody survived. <laughs> well, we I know that he worked with Bahath before as the Bahath was a sword. Yes. That's the extent of like that's what I'm assuming that he meant by that. Yeah, that's what I meant by that. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know the atrocities. Ramus does. I wasn't in the yeah. vision. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, when we were, uh, had our little secret meeting, I would have conveyed like what I had saw to you, what I saw to you, so that you would you would understand uh-huh. what I saw. Oh, you would have. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. I had a feeling that was shared completely. Yeah, that, that okay. was my assumption too. That everybody had a conversation about it except Maharib. I, well, uh, we were talking about the axe, not Baha. So I, I, that's why I was. I didn't assume that he told me about that that stuff. Gotcha. Okay. What What do you remember about that, Maharib? Noth- nothing. I'm simply going off what. What she told me and the fact that you mentioned it when you looked at the sword. It's one of the things I wanted to ask you about, if you could tell me more. Now, I'm going to ask you, do you want to know? Truly want to know, because you can't unknow it again. You realize by framing it in such a way that Yes, yes, I want to know, but you shouldn't do that in the future. <laughs> Maharib, we need to talk. Not right now, like just later, but like I have something very important I need to tell you, but not right now, later. Yeah. Not right now. It's important. <laughs> I saw death, destruction, fire, women, children. Men screaming and dying and burning in flame. Your sword drenched in blood. It made you do things that are unspeak. I can't even like repeat some of them. They were so horrific. The visions were just so intense. So much dis- pure rage and fire and death it was the embodiment of everything that that thing wants to do do you still draw your power from heaven Ramus I don't that's a very good question because I think they would have turned it off by now if I but I'm still drawing from something well, Ramus. Assuming you are, though. If, if you were to ask me, I'm sorry to interrupt, Maharib, but if you were to ask me, I think you are still getting your power from heaven. I think you're getting it from the tower. The tower may be trying to teach the entirety of heaven a lesson. The tower's lesson. Which is what? To be reborn, you must also destroy. Hmm. It's true. I've been thinking about it. That would make sense. Heaven is exactly the opposite of what the tower teaches. It exists forever. And probably has lost its way because it's existed for too long. Perhaps the (laughs) stewards of the tower. Adam, I'm sorry. Are they gods? Hmm. Like the like gods of the tower or god of the tower or what? How do I refer to it? It's that? so the tower isn't a thing. Uh, there's no there's no like singular thing, right? The tower isn't like Thor or Odin. The tower is a philosophical a philosophical bureau within the bureaucracy of heaven. It is okay. a place. Um, like a literal place, like the bureau of the tower is a thing, and there are those that serve it, and they are gods. Uh, there is a person, there's a God in charge of, of that bureau, but they are not themselves. The tower, the tower is a concept reflected in the organization of heaven. 
if I were to refer to it, would it be fair to say the will of the tower? Yeah, sure. Because that means the will okay. of all of the gods that work towards gotcha. the tower's end. Okay. Okay. So perhaps the will of the tower is to use the Hoth and the primordials to do what they do naturally. That is to burn, to destroy. Or perhaps not to direct, but to allow, to let them run free. I, th- I think it's fair to say that that's part of their plan. I, at least, but they're so mysterious, it's hard to get information from heaven. They don't speak with mortals, like, they think they're above us. But I definitely feel that something is a stirring. I don't know what. Something is going on. How much do you trust what you saw, though? Couldn't they manipulate whatever it was you were asking and show you the one thing that would make you distrust me? Right. I... Good question. I don't mistrust you, Maharib. Because what I saw wasn't you. It was Bahath acting through you. You were like a mask it was wearing. You allowed it to take control or influence. I don't know why, but I don't I don't feel I was seeing you, but more what it was making you do. You, you knew me when I had the sword. Yes. Why would I not be that same person? Something must have happened. You came back different from the void, Maharib. I don't know why, but you've been different. Not bad or better or worse, just not the same. Do you know why things are not the same? Well, I died. That probably has something to do with it. Yeah. But then again, we all came back different. Some more apparent than others. We all have scars from that place. Mm. You don't remember anything else from when, when, when you were, when I saved you, do you? I know you've been asked this multiple times. Flashes. I was trapped in some strong illusion. Flashes of something behind me. I can still feel it. It's hand. I still feel the weight on my shoulders sometimes. It, you, I, it, it, I didn't like whatever it was. It didn't feel good. You remember the, the pact that I told you I agreed to? The one that gave you the sword, yes. Mm. I mean, the axe, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. I know what you meant. All right, well. If, if you remember anything else from that time, please, tell me. It would be great to just know. I, I have my own experience, but... I don't trust very much these days. So having someone else's experiences match up with that would benefit me. I think I like take the last bit of food and put the mm. bowl down.
Do you I... pray, Maharib? <laughs> Never. Do you what? What do you? What do your people worship? Is there any sort of spirituality? Mm -mm. Suppose we worship the land for providing, but we'll make sacrifices, but they're not to anyone in particular. They're to everything here. The land provides, you give back to it. So you, in your own way, worship the world. Sure, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, and and Ramus, can you can you make a religion check real quick? Mm -hmm. Twenty three. Nice. Okay, twenty three. So, the world is the most enigmatic of the of the Arcana because it represents the to heaven. It represents the joining of of uh, an individual soul with the fountain. Right. It's this becoming one with everything, but. The, the world also represents like the entirety of the physical world, right? It, it is in this other sense, this like kind of Gaia figure, like Mother Earth in the sense that, you know, it is this the embodiment of, of like Mahari was saying, like the land or, you know, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it could be that in their own way, they worship uh, the world. It could also be that they unknowingly worship like a sleeping primordial. Like you'd have to see their culture like up close to be able to understand the nuance. Um, but the lines become blurry in that place, right? There are some who believe that the, the world is literally the greatest of all the primordials and that she is, she is sleeping and that heaven is basically just drawing power from here, uh, from her. Um, there is there is some some thought there that the world is where the faith in the primordials and the faith in heaven kind of overlap. Um, but there's no way that Maharib's people would know that uh, if that is what was happening. OK. I, I would like to see your people sometime, Maharib. Huh. Good luck finding them. I, I have no idea where the tribe is. It's been. Sometime. I never asked, but do you have family there? I have a brother. I had a brother. I'm not sure. It's it's complicated as family tends to be. I I wouldn't know, but. If you ever want to go back and see them, I would accompany you sometime. If you ever need a reprieve from all this. Uh, there's probably like a pretty long pause uh, for Mahari. We'll, we'll see. It, when we have no time, pressure, there's a lot happening. Yeah. It, you know, it, we'll see. Do you have family, Ten Pillars, or is that not, does that hurt the, the business, as it were? I tried for a while, but my wife died, and we were a young couple, and I didn't see myself ever finding anyone of her caliber so I entered the service of the court of coins well, that was my minor taste of a uh, family life how'd she die we lived in a outlying village outside of the court of coins and we were raided I Cutthroats, thieves, people who were lawless and feral. We were raided by a bunch of 
I don't know, Goliath mercenaries. Oh, no, uh, that's, had a that's definitely where my sword. mind went. Like, <laughs> as soon as he said that, I was like, well, I killed Tin Pillar's wife. <laughs> that's immediately where my Hell, mind went. Tell me, my Reeve, you ever been to the Court of Coins, motherfucker? <laughs> I would, what a what a massive twist that would be where Zeke is like, I've been meaning to talk to you about that, and then he shoots you in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Oh, my name those is noodles. Of gold. You killed my wife. Prepare to die. Please. Finally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, lawless. Mm, tribal. I don't know who they are or where they're from. They just swept through, hit a, hit a few villages, took what they could, and went back to where they were from. Hmm. Was this long ago? Yes. 30 years or more. Well, I'm sure it means nothing, but I'm sorry for your loss. It does mean something, and I appreciate that. But while the lessons of the past can guide us in the future, we should talk about the future now. Ramus, do you think that your relationship with Bahath could that you could steer it, its destruction towards grave dirt and the necromancer king and their ilk. Yes, I think it wants to kill and destroy, and that will be easy. But the hard part is going to be making it wait to the right moment. It's if it attacks now, it's not it'll ready. get slaughtered. Exactly. Yeah, it needs time. And the other thing is, Grave Dirt will know that the Embers are recruiting. I mean, this place mm -hmm. is empty. There's hundreds out there recruiting at this very moment. She probably already yeah. has spies living amongst them here. So. Mm -hmm. That's what I fear. Do you think there's any way that we could steal her army from her? Gold is a very good motivator, in my experience. Only the living version. A good pilot. Only the living version. Well, yes, we steal them before they can become army, the army of the dead. Mm -hmm. seem now, can I, can I do an inside check to see if that, like, my time spent in the camp, that gold would be any sort of motivator for these guys? I mean... Maharib knows that, like, they're mercenaries, but at the end of the day, they're pretty indoctrinated within... Yeah, you can... Ten Pillars, I think you can make either... Like, it would be appropriate to be... To do an insight check or a history check or... Yeah, I think I think either of those is reasonable to kind of, like, ponder that thought. Like, hmm, what would happen if I... I did yeah. that? Hmm? Crit! Oh, damn! <laughs> okay. So, as Maharib points out, there are... So, if you divide... If you divide the the soldiers you've seen so far, because your whole goal was to go and like, you know, scope out if peace was possible. Right. So you spent all that time. We saw you lay in the groundwork for this role. So you could. Probably get like I don't know, about a third of them, you could probably scoop about a third of them. Uh, they would the, the ones that arrived recently enough. They haven't been indoctrinated yet. Um, they wouldn't be the best fighters. They wouldn't necessarily be like the most valuable, um, but you could get those guys. The people who have been there a little while, uh, long enough to begin or, you know, even even go through the process of re-education, they believe in the Mara now. Um, you know, remember the um the 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 whole progress of the narrative that the King of Black Rivers, uh, a.k.a. the Necromancer King, has been spreading is the old ways are dead. Uh, this is the new way. You know, peasants, let's rise up and, and kill heaven. And they, they kind of sound like you guys. <laughs> That's the story, right? Like heaven has stomped on you long enough. It's time to it's time for us to take up arms and kill off the court of swords 
and, you know, set fire to the old ways. The new state is the state of the dead. Um, and then the rest of them are already dead. They serve, they serve because their soul is bound to the Mara, right? They have already died. Now the danger, and I'm only telling you this because you crit, if you, if you let your mind spool out, if grave dirt finds out that a third of her men are being bribed to leave, she'll murder them all. Yeah. Yeah, She will just kill them all with horrible magic or have the other guys kill them as a test of loyalty. And then she'll just add them to the pile of corpses. Now living soldiers who have given their soul over to the Mara. That's what they really want. It would still be a loss for her because shambling zombies, they're not, it's not an ideological win, and that's what the Mara want, right? They want to crush those who worship heaven. They want to rob them of their faith and replace it with their own. They're not here to take territory. They're not a traditional foe. They don't want money. They don't want farmland. This isn't necessarily even about religion. It's just heaven and its order exists, and the Mara or its antithesis. And all they want is to destroy that which is because they are that which is not. Uh, so yeah. Also, if you have any questions like a crit on an insight about a big topic like this, so mm-hmm. have this conversation, but keep in mind that 10 pillars has a deep understanding, understanding of the organization of the Mara. So if anybody has questions, they ask you Zeke, you can pass them up to me and I can, I can give you more insight about that. I'm just wondering, um, do I think this is a story? Cause like, nothing can change the hearts and minds of people like a good story in this day and age Mm. and the story that I want, the narrative that I want to weave is that um, if we manage to like, you know, like bribe a third of her army to defect. Yeah. And then she ends up killing them all. Then we could spread (laughs) the story. We could spread that story. Like she, demands loyalty or death and the, like we demand neither we uh, we you know we're the good guys you know that kind of shit like we want we want Rem- to scare remember, people from them not to them remember that the the narratives about dying in the world are different than our own world right um that death is not something people are necessarily like scared of in the sense that like if you die in service to your destiny, if it is your destined time to die, that's a good, that's a reward you're supposed to. Um, The Mara, they are trying to free people from this idea that dying is the end, right? Cause as, as Ramus pointed out kind of earlier on, and it was, we've seen before the, the, barrier between life and death being permeable is something the Mara are teaching, right? Where it's like, you don't have to die. Or if you do, it doesn't matter. Remember there was that guy who was like, I love the Mara. They brought my grandma back from the dead <laughs> and grandma's a yeah. zombie, right? Like, well, that's, that's, that's a saying, thing that like, they're, they're teaching them. Yeah. So that's the narrative. That's you have another to narrative. Another narrative yeah. we can, we can start is that, is that not only will they kill you, but you will not get the rewards of heaven because they will not let you go there. Yes. So what, what be, Ramus needs to... Your soul will be trapped here forever and you will never return to the wheel. Right. Well, and so, of course, that's Ten Pillars' approach, right? Is that that you use Heaven's narrative because that's what people have been indoctrinated to. And, and Ten Pillars also probably believes that because that is what happens. Or you never get to yep. reincarnate. You can't become one with the universe. But, like, yeah, Ramus, there might be some room for another narrative here where you get to be like... Like you if you worship harmony then there's paradise right like the the analogies just keep coming up between early Mm -hmm. what we would call like religions of the book in in the real world like early judaism and christianity and and islam that idea of like your soul's reward is based on something else besides heaven's machinations so yeah i mean i think giving people something to believe in after they die is going to be a significant part of this but with these people telling them that if you don't obey her or she'll kill you, they're pretty used to that shit already. Right. Where it's like, if you don't do what heaven wants, you'll die. And then you get to be a rat for a thousand years or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. You need another, you need a counter story for both heaven and the Mara. Right. Well, 
Well, I, I relay all that information to to Ramus and Maharib. Bring up the idea of of uh, the a narrative that we can spin that will spread across the land, and will help to help people to uh, beware of ten pillars, or you will serve her for eternity and never Ranger, get yeah. adjust. Or excuse me, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, don't worship yeah. her, worship me. I mean, uh, Ramus is what I meant. Oh, yeah. I meant Ramus, um, yeah. <laughs> well, so here, here's the thing that, that because we talked about mercenaries, right? Ten Pillars and, and Maharib, it would occur to you that with all that gold, you could probably, like, forge a contract with a mercenary company. You could probably buy some mercs of your own, and they would be loyal to you so long as you got the cash for it, right? A unit, a, a a battalion, a cadre of mercs, they're 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 good for the gold, right? Um, and ten pillars, you you could probably like get a connect. It would take some time, but you know people who know people who know mercenaries. Maybe get ten of them, clad them in gold armor. <laughs> just, just a, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Each one of them are my pillars. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they carry you around. Yeah. Well, yeah. so that's that's the thing, right? You you that is an option that both of you yeah. would be aware of is that that money could go towards hired goons. Lots of them or like a smaller number of better goons. Though please don't I, ask me how much it would cost to hire mercenaries because I literally have no idea. Um uh, keep talking, I'll try to figure it out. God damn it. <laughs> you knew that was what I was like <laughs> how much is this well, like, going to no, cost not, me? Uh, it's not on the it's not on the 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 equipment list, right? <laughs> like I'm pretty sure there's a I, table. For I don't it, it used to there's be, gotta right? be yeah, somewhere. It used to be like something a, per day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look. Worst case scenario, yeah, we just use the A D and D amount and figure it out from there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, right, go ahead. What we you're saying something. Right? What we need is an idea that breaks the shackles of people. If we let people People do what they've been taught. They will believe that heaven will have everything taken care of and they just have to wait and destiny will take care of itself. We need people to fight for themselves, not because heaven wants them to. We need to unite people of heaven, the elementals, to clean up the mess that the Mara and heaven have created here. The Mara are here to fight heaven. Heaven is... We need to take punish both of them for their foolishness. People need to rise up re- and be powerful again. So that's what you're offering them in return, Ramus. Is that they'll take be back your destiny. Don't let someone else control it for you. Aren't you controlling it by doing that very thing? You said punish them. Punish the Mara in heaven. I see. The people who have, if there was no heaven, the Mara would not be here doing this. Hmm. I think you can at least agree, Maharib, that despite the good that heaven has done, it's caused a lot of bad. Yes, I'll, I will agree to that. People have been taught for so long that to sit back and passively let these higher powers play with their lives, people need to rise up and be powerful again. And where do you fit in all this, Remus Creel? You better not I say at the just, top. You'll know better than they are. If you I... Don't. Just want the, to be the one that makes people open their eyes to what's going on. I want to be the messenger that spreads the truth to the people that they don't want to hear. Because if they don't, they don't want to hear it. But when they hear it, they will feel compelled to resist. Not all of them. Some will. Be stuck in their ways, but if they don't 
rise up against these powers, one or the other will swallow them up. It's not a bad message. The court of, the court of coins would be a great bastion of humanity, not heaven. Where all people could come and be free of that message of heaven to fight for humanity and save us from the Mara, which are trying to kill us all. Because he heaven won't do a thing. It's our destiny to die. Well, I know at least four people who would stand in your way. The king, queen, the knight, and the page. Yep. <laughs> mm hmm. Well, the four the four richest people in the entire world uh, who are put in this place because of heaven's power. They they are going to be. Yes, that is going to be the boss of the of the court of coins. They will not step down willingly. That all must go if this is to be the future that Ramus envisions. You know that, right? Ten pillars. All of this hierarchy must be removed. I believe that it would work for a time, but all I can say is that in my travels, whether they say it or not, people want the yoke of order. They want someone to serve. They want someone to be over them and to be over. That could exist as long as they don't tout themselves as beacons of divinity up in wherever they reside. But, but you are saying that in order for this to occur, you have to topple the hierarchy as it stands now. Ultimately. Yes, it's easier said than done, obviously, and it's not something that's going to happen anytime soon. I, I had an idea for that. A tricky one, but you're not going to like it, Myri, but as you said, people need something, at least given the, the illusion that there's guidance. I was thinking we should have a council of elementals, all of them, including the ones in heaven that have and that have fallen out of place. Make them equals on a council where they all can vote on different things for humanity. Mm. Good luck getting them in the same room. It'd be very hard. but they could keep the others in check to prevent from this from happening again. Hmm. Still a hierarchy. And unfortunately, as much as we don't want it to be, the elementals do have power. Magic and otherwise. But if they are all in harmony with one another, they could keep each other in check. Right, and, and there is there is some, like, base level, and this kind of extrapolation makes sense for, for the world. There is a base level, like, balance that comes from fire being balanced against water, earth being balanced against air, right? Like, you... That, that there's principles in alchemy that apply to the the natural world and the natural world is made up of the primordial spirits. So like that tracks Ramus, like you're not, you're not just um, uh, hoping that that's the case. Like you, yeah. you could try to find a way to make that possible. Yeah. And, and I think to you, Maharib, that would make sense. But the thing is Ramus and Templars are talking about this shit on a scale that doesn't make any sense to you. Like your, your, community or your clan or tribe or whatever is small because that allows everyone's voice to be heard. It allows you to make right, decisions right, right. like they, they, you, if, if a clan gets big enough, you split and become two clans because it's just not 
like big cities and stuff don't make sense from a, a community perspective for what you've learned as a, as a person, but 10 pillars, you're on the other side where the individual doesn't matter right to the court of coins. They're a number on a ledger. It's the bigger overarching protocols that allow you to feed and clothe and house millions of people successfully. Like it is possible, but it requires control. It requires somebody be in charge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why I'm, that's why Mahari so against hierarchy. Cause the second that a hierarchy yeah. started to be formed in a tribe, there was war. Right. So it, it yeah, right. Exactly. It causes things. Yeah. Causes chaos, yeah, when somebody decides they're in charge of somebody else. Yeah. Well, this is all very, very grandiose and in the future. I'd, it's an interesting conversation, but it's not one that needs to take place now, I think. We need to make sure that Bahath doesn't go outside of their reach. If you know what I'm on, just maybe we could conv convince her to bi build her fuel, postpone it so she can make her fire grand. Like before she starts burning, make a big bonfire here. She burns too bright. Grave dirt's gonna see it. That's My the other exactly. thing. That's the other thing. They need to move. They can't be here. It's too close and too vulnerable. What better place for the embers, though, than a dwarven volcanic rune? Where would they go? I. This is the only place that I, they're safe to burn without burning anything else. I know. Can you, and, Maharib? Can you can you make a nature check real quick? I mean, I know where you're going with this, but yeah, <laughs> a six. I think that's okay. even like right. pretty high to understand where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, then I won't. I won't say anything. But if you if you know what I'm thinking, then, yeah. then maybe it occurs to my in some like, limited way too. There's, uh, well, there was a forest that was burned a while back. I don't know. I I've not been there myself, but the Shulin Valley. That is near the Court of co Coins. Mm -hmm. That's northwest of here. I don't know if that's How far the away place, is that? Or... Well, this uh, is a so place. Ten... I was going to say 10 pillars. So the, you would be very aware of the Shulin Valley. The Shulin Valley is, I'm trying to think of like a modern equivalent. It's like a disputed territory, right? Uh, where the Court of Coins is like, this is our valley. And the Court of Swords is like, this is our valley. And no one can agree. Up until a little while ago when 20 or 30 it, years. Yeah. Or no, yeah, probably. Well, no, so, so yeah. Yeah. For you guys. Yeah. This, this event pretty, pretty recently, there was like a horrible natural, natural conflagration. There was like a, a forest fire or like an eruption or something. You don't really, but everybody that lived there is dead now. It's like, it's just a ruin. It's a smoldering ruin. Um, but what Ramus knows is that Imix did that. This, that, that valley was blessed by Imix himself. Blessed with his uh -huh. gift. They could live amongst his handiwork. I don't think it'd be a hard sell. I thought that was if they were there, story. if they were there, they would be near the Court of Co Swords' last resistance. It's an idea for sure. Regardless of what happened there. If no Last one... I checked, no one really wants a burnt out valley. They're living in caves though. I'm... Is that any better? It is defensible. That is true. And there's a cave system there too they could use if they want. Hmm. That's true. How far is it from here? I was just uh, asking God that. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's it's a long it's a long way, right? Like like a week's I mean, journey, two a, weeks journey. Yeah, the entirety of the time it took you to get down here. It's not about distance, ten pillars, right? Because you you made almost that exact journey. <sighs> it's just that 
there are difficulties in travel right now. The roads are closed. There's brigands everywhere. The dead walk the earth. Um, so getting back there takes some significant time. So it would be probably it took you. What do we say? Like two months to get down here from the from the court of coins. So it would probably take a good six weeks to get back to the northern capital. And then from there, a few days west to get to the Shulin Valley. The northern capital is the biggest city closest to the the valley. Um, I don't know if Mungvat is still around, but there used to be a court of coins fortress on the north side of the of the valley. Um, the court of swords had their own too, but we don't know if those are still around. Yeah. Also, that's where you died, Ramus. <laughs> You're literally mm-hmm. going. You'd be going back to your own grave. So back yeah, I mean, it would. It would. And ended. It'd be a significant. It'd be a significant journey, but um, not impossible. I mean, you you made it here, but you also had. I mean, uh, you do now. You have money to bribe people, and you have you have your official permission to travel the roads, right? So you can show that seal and be like, "Yo, official guys, back off." So it it would be a trek, but yeah, it's it's doable. Adam, did I? I'm, tr- I'm failing to find out my character sheet. Did I find the name of that sure. mage that was here? Oh yeah, what was that lady's name? Um, the like researcher, right? Yeah. Um, did I? Did she give me her name for some reason. It. Her name is uh, her name is Zaida Zaida Al Shaim. She's a um court of uh court of wands. Uh, wizard. And did she give me a way to contact her? I don't think so. Okay. I think she was just like, yo, y'all crazy. See ya. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I say like, you know, how far is it? Ramus gives me an idea of how long it took to get down or did, did I travel with them or did, did they find me in a village somewhere? I don't, I forget. I think I just like, was recruited as a mercenary somewhere along the way, right? I think we yeah. crossed the border of the quarter coins of the swords together. Okay, that's yes. right. I remember that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that then I still wouldn't know like how far away that is. Um, so I say that and I'd look towards ten pillars of these mages. Could they transport the people there that you work with? I'm not I'm not sure what you mean. Well they appeared out of thin air here. Can they do that to an army? I've never heard of that happening. That would take <sighs> tens of thousands of gold. Mm. No, <laughs> I don't, I, know if I don't think a... I mean, I, yeah, I'll go. I'll get, I don't think. I was gonna say I don't. I don't know if there's a mass teleport. Like I don't know if that's a thing you can do. Um, but I'll look. Sorry. I don't think it's ready. a matter of gold, Mahri. But I think it's a matter of people who can perform the task. Hmm. Transporting one person takes a lot of power. Transporting an army would take more power than I think any of the courts have. It would be a. Interesting turn of events for Grave Dirt to witness that, if it could occur. One day an army here, the next gone in a second. It might halt them in their tracks for at least a little while longer. But I don't know enough about that to know if it's possible. I think if it were possible, I would have heard of it by now. And they might have done it by now. Mm. so two two things that occur real quick so one there is a spell available to wizards uh also bards and sorcerers called teleportation circle uh where you create a five foot circle and anybody that walks into it appears uh elsewhere right you can create a permanent one but you have to it takes a year to to make a permanent teleportation circle now ramus and maharib uh and berg if berg was not busy uh it would occur to you too there already exists a network of interconnected teleportation circles there's the moon right? bridge you've, yeah, used, know of. you've used the moon bridge before right servants of the moon have a network 
for transporting spies from temple to temple. Now it's not, they don't exist in every temple, um, but there, there may be, there may be a way. I think that's how y'all got here, right? To the, uh, mm-hmm. to the jungle in the, in the first place. Yeah. Or near here. I remember you taking it. So. Yeah. But apparently like the moon gates are fucking fraught with bad guys. Bad they are. Yes. Want to kill you. They, <laughs> yes. They, they, tra- they transit a danger. I think that one in particular was, I mean, the, the network used to be better than it is now. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really thing. going to shit since public funding, you know, kind of went. Down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the the problem is the people with the money aren't necessarily the temples; they're the governments, especially the court of uh, the court of uh, of coins. And nobody really trusts the the temple of the moon, right? Because they're a bunch of sneaky illusionists, and they have spies everywhere. And like, you know, so you got special access to it, but it is possible. Uh, there is just figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe I mean maybe the 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 conversation continues in some some limited way. You know, you you throw around some ideas, but it seems like there are a lot of futures that lie before you, right? That's the that's the thing is like it's clear to everybody you stand on the edge of a of a precipice and there are many ways that you can travel to go forward, but it's just about choosing one and and choosing one that you think will carry you to where you need to go. Yeah. So I think that that maybe that that tension hangs in the air, that feeling of um, profundity uh, before we yeah, before we fade to we fade to break. And, cool. uh, I guess when we get back, we can see kind of what else is going on and go talk to Bahath or something. Yeah, probably. Lots I'd of probably options. Next course of action, so we'll figure it out, though. Okay. We're going to take a break. Cool. We'll come back. Uh, we'll see what happens right here on Court of Swords. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more. <laughs> 